Hey guys, what's up? Abby Paredes here and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about some tips and tricks on how to improve your resume as an industrial engineering student. So I really hope you guys enjoy this video and stay tuned. So back to what I was saying. Hey guys, welcome back. And real quick, I just want to give a quick shout out to the user um, Othul Hawk. I hope I'm saying your name right. Thank you for commenting and letting me know that you wanted to see me um, do this video. I thought it was a great idea and I think it's a great way to help others. So one of the first tips that I want to give you guys, and you've probably heard this a million times, but it is super important. And that tip is to get involved. Now, whenever you're applying for internships, it's just better to have something down there even if you don't have previous job experience and getting involved doesn't have to be like anything crazy literally you could do like um ambassadors i know my school does that um i think all schools might do that basically with an ambassador is your representative of your college so like you can be a representative of the engineering college and you just talk to like incoming students and you just like share your experience with them so that's something that would really make you stand out um and you could also be like a tour guide too that helps too um if you tutor or anything like that that's a great way to stand out um also like key leadership positions um if you're part of any um clubs or organizations definitely write that in there um army rotc or any rotc program is a great thing to write in there too i'm in the army rotc and that has really helped me a lot in getting internships also if you play any sports write that in there any intramurals and stuff like that that's also something really great and it's really good to start thinking early on getting in those leadership skills okay so number two tip is to get a job Getting some sort of job, it doesn't have to be anything crazy, just any type of job experience can really help you. Now, preferably, because when you mention get a job to college students, one of the first thing that may pop in their head is like fast food establishments and like servers and stuff like that. But if you can like get a job, for example, like a lot of industrial engineers end up working as operations supervisors for like um, distribution centers. So if you can get a job in like one of the a distribution center, like as doing warehouse operations, that would be a great way to get ahead. Because that's also a great way to get that industry experience that a lot of it, employers are looking for. So, and you don't necessarily have to do anything crazy. Like you can be a picker or something like that too. You can do like admin level stuff. That's also a great thing to do. Like I know by my school, we have Mylan. A lot of the students that work there, they do like admin stuff or they just work in the labs part-time see simple things like that can really 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 give you a leg up okay so number three thing to do is to write down important concepts learned in class now something that you can do is even if you're not planning on applying to internships start looking for internships and start looking at those job descriptions to see what employers are looking for so that way when those topics do come up in class you know already to pay extra attention to those topics so when you're in class and after you're done covering a lesson make sure you write that lesson down on a piece of paper just so you can keep a mental note of what you're doing you know a lot of people like to focus on the classes that they've taken as certain skills but if you write down the name of the class Sometimes you can be taken away from certain topics that employers are looking for. For example, in my re-engineering management class, like we go over like 5S analysis, med analysis, and like inventory management. But if I were to put down just re-engineering management, because that's the name of the class, I wouldn't be highlighting those other important concepts that a lot of employers do look for, like the 5S and SMED and inventory management. So that's why I say, after each lesson, just make sure you write down the name of that lesson, just so you can have like a list of skills that you have learned. Um, and of course, not employer is the same. So that way, when you have this list of skills, you can just alter your resume and just include those skills in the resume to the, only the jobs that require it. Number four is to highlight your projects that you worked on. Projects can be so, so important. And at my school, like we start doing projects very early on in our years. Like you can be doing a project by the second semester of your freshman year. And then as you start getting in your IE classes, then you start doing like IE specific projects and then make sure to include those as well. And when you're in a project group, I know a lot of times people are just like, 
and they just like want to put it off or they just don't take it as serious try to take it serious and try to you know take the lead if you can too because a lot of projects typically apply to a lot of those behavioral questions that employers do ask you number five tip is to teach yourself skills like we live in a day and age where we have so much information available to us literally at our fingertips and a lot of times you don't learn everything you need in college so if you want to enhance that by teaching yourself that's a great way to go about it i literally learned sql just from watching youtube videos and when once employers see that you like self-taught yourself a skill they will really like that and that will really make you stand out and that's also a great talking point in an interview. Um, there's so many different programs out there that you can self-teach yourself. You know, you have Python, R, all those kinds of things. And it's just a great way to get ahead of the game. Okay, number six tip is to force yourself to go to career fairs. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably dread career fairs. I used to for the longest time. But if you if you're not planning on actually like actually getting an internship, going to a career fair is just great practice too. When you go to a career fair, you don't have to actively be looking for something. Like you can literally just go to get yourself familiarized, like being in that environment. So you are more prepared when that time actually comes because career fairs can be extremely intimidating and the more you do it, like the less scary it is and the more confident you are in it. So if you're a freshman, I recommend like, um, even if it's just your fall semester, like just go so you can just see what it's like first. And then your spring semester, go too. You know, get the nerves out and build that confidence up. It can really help you when the time comes and you're actively looking for internship at a career fair. And number seven tip that I'm gonna give to you guys is to invest in yourself. Like really start trying to go above and beyond in what you do. Like really start to get really motivated and passionate in what you're doing because once you're naturally motivated and passionate like these things will come so easy to you and will come so simple to you like it won't be as dreading to do some of these tasks so, so you can start like reading those self-awareness books books that really like give you a sense of why those books to really that really give you that inspiration to really go out there and thrive trust me a lot of times when you're actually passionate in something and you actually want to do something you're better at it and start to get that discipline. You're in college now, like soon you're gonna be a, a professional. So, you know, start developing those skills and those characteristics um, that you need when you are in the real world. Okay, so now I'm gonna shift gears a little bit and I'm gonna talk about actually applying to internship. First thing with that is to keep your resume simple. A lot of companies use uh, ATS, which are applicant tracking systems, and if you have like these crazy icons and stuff like that on your resume, although they may look amazing, trust me, because I was there and I had it, but that could really like mess up the format of your resume and that could really hurt you. Um, you know, if you have the icons in there, a lot of these systems, they might miss a couple of keywords that you have on there and they won't pick it up. So I say literally just keep it simple. Um, go to your career services. They have a lot of templates there um, for like professional resumes and engineering resumes. Once I changed my resume and it was more simple, I still didn't really have an issue getting internships. So I think that really does help. Now this tip is something that I started doing that I really noticed it made a huge difference. This is probably one of the most important things that made the biggest difference. Um, so whenever you go to a job application and you know, you have the job description, I usually like, I copy that job description and then I paste it onto word counter. And then usually like it's at the bottom right hand corner, they'll tell you like the keywords and how many times they show up, like the frequency of them. I did that. Like I would look at the keywords and see what keywords showed up the most. And then I'll kind of like try to alter my resume and try to like fit those keywords into my resume. Cause a lot of times as an industrial engineering student, we have a lot of the skills that these employers are looking for. However, we might not showcase them on our resume. You know, even though like two job descriptions may have the same title, they may be looking for two different things and we learn so much as IEs we're not able to fit every single thing on one resume so with that being said make sure you alter your resume before you apply to a job like it's pro it's super tedious but trust me this is like the number one thing that I think has helped me out the most a lot of times it's so easy and so tempting to just take the easy way out and just have that one resume and apply to everything but trust me that doesn't really work that well. Like you'll just end up applying to hundreds of jobs and internships and you'll only be getting like two callbacks or something. But um, if you really want your ratio to go up, start altering for 
every single job description you apply. I know it's tedious, but trust me, it's so worth it. Another tip um, is to clean up your LinkedIn and start connecting to recruiters. If you're on LinkedIn and you're looking for jobs, and um, a lot of times they'll show you the recruiter that posted it, apply for the job and message and connect with the recruiter. And you can just say, hi, I saw the job application that you posted here for this position and be like, I just applied to it and I'm so excited about this opportunity and blah, 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 like something along those lines. And that really does help too. And then lastly, once you land that interview, make sure you practice, practice, practice. Like practice makes perfect with literally everything. Practice like little mock interviews. A lot of times your career services office, they will have mock interviews that you can do with them. And make sure you go online, you look at those questions and you practice those behavioral questions and technical questions too. Um, even if you don't have someone to practice with, just practice in front of the mirror. Like, Practice saying these things out loud. It helps so much more than just thinking about it. Um, lastly, another tip I wanna give you guys is there are so many behavioral questions that employers can ask you. So what I would say is just start thinking about scenarios that you can be able to apply to certain different behavioral questions. Um, for example, like if you worked on a project, start thinking of scenarios like where you took leadership and start correlating that to like how you were innovative and stuff like that. That way, that right there, that's already two answers to behavioral question. Okay, so that's it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, please keep the questions and comments coming. I love reading it. I'll be coming out with more videos now, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching guys. Y'all the best.